Did you know that you might be using Excel the same way that you might be driving a sports car? In fact, a sports car that can go 200. And you're driving in a first gear at something like 30. Now, yes, yeah, it goes pretty fast from 0 to 30 in first gear, but you're not going to take it much faster. In fact, if you imagine watching a Ferrari drive past in first gear, revving hard, you'll think that driver doesn't know how to use the car. You know, it could be the same with you and Excel. Excel has got many gears and you may only be on the first gear. Now, how do you know that? Well, you'll find yourself using the menus a lot and you may even learn a few shortcuts, but you won't have touched the most powerful feature, which is the VBA programming language, which is built right into Excel. Now, if you don't know anything about macros in VBA, they are the key to using Excel faster, and I'll show you how in this video. Just the other day, someone asked me, how do I get the number format changed with a shortcut key so that it goes to two decimal places in the thousands with brackets around negative numbers in red? And he showed me, he said, what I normally do is go to the more number formats I'll check the number category, I'll tick the thousand separator, make sure it's on two decimal places, and select this last option for negative numbers, and I click OK. And now he had to do that for many spreadsheets, in fact, most of his spreadsheets he had to go through and do the same thing. I said, no, 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 no. What you got to do is learn how to use macros in VBA. So the question, first question he came up with was, what's a macro? And I said, well, let's think of it this way. A macro is a bit like a tape recording. You tell Excel what exactly it should do in the exact steps it should do them in, and it remembers. So just like a tape recorder, when you switch it to record, it remembers what you say, and then it plays it back word for word. So let me show you how you do use the macro recorder and how you'd be able to automate doing something like that. The first challenge in Excel 2010 is to find the macro recorder. It's actually down here on the bottom left and it shows at the moment that no macro is a current recording. To make this more useful though I want to show the developer tab. That's the first thing we're going to do then. So we'll head over to the file menu, down to options, We'll click on Customize the Ribbon, and over on the right, in the main tabs, we're going to find the Developer tab. That's got Macros and VBA options in it. So I'll click that, and then head over to the OK button. Now you'll see the Developer tab. If I click on that, you'll see that I can record a macro. So let's just do this macro. We'll record it for that one cell and we'll see what happens. So click on record macro, it's going to ask for a name, let's call it macro1. I'll ignore shortcut key for the moment. It's going to store it in this workbook, or we could choose it, uh, choose to store it in the personal macro workbook or in a new workbook, but this time we'll just save it in this workbook. And as a description I'll put in format the selection to preferred number format then click OK now it's recording and what I'll do is I'll head to the home tab so every action I perform Excel will record something or most of the actions I perform Excel will record the code to recreate those actions so I'll go and do exactly the same things as before go to more number formats I'll choose number two decimal places, use the thousand separator, choose a negative number which is red and surrounded by brackets, click OK. Now I can go back to the developer tab and click stop recording. To see what we recorded let's head over to the macros. I'll view macros by pressing that button. So macro 1 is what we recorded. We're going to click edit and this will bring us to the Visual Basic Editor. Don't worry about finding Excel, 
uh, it's just hiding in the background. In fact, all you need to do is click on that button and it will go back to Excel. But for the moment, let's just have a quick look at what it recorded. It's a macro one up here, and there's a comment. This is the only thing in black here that Excel recorded. So it's telling us that it's recorded the selection and the number format of that selection should be equal to this expression here, which is what we wanted in the first place. So let's head back and see what happens when we try to apply that in Excel. I'll click on this Excel button to view Microsoft Excel and it switches us back here. Let's try it on the January numbers. If I click on macros, macro one selected, if I run that now, you'll see that it's done the same thing and applied the same number format to all the numbers we selected, which is great. Let's see how we could use it quicker, more efficiently. We can actually assign a shortcut key to that macro. If I head over to the options button, you'll see the shortcut key and I'll choose Control shift n because that's not taken by any other shortcuts and it also stands for n for number format so Control shift n is the new shortcut key I've identified with this macro click OK and I'll close a dialog box let's try that with February now so I select all of February and I remember my Control shortcut key Control shift n and it updates all those number formats to the format we want, which is great. Now let's say we wanted to tweak that slightly, because at this point my friend's going, yes, I like that, it saved me time. Instead of having to go through the home menu and then the number format and click down here and choose a number format and go through all that, I can hit one keyboard combination and it will change the format immediately. Control shift n but he said, I don't really like the way that it shows zeros. I actually want it to show a dash instead of a zero. So I'll say, yeah, we can do that. Same macro, we'll just edit it and look at the VBA, which is the language it's written in. So to do that, let's head back to the developer tab. We will go in, click on Visual Basic, because this brings up the Visual Basic editor where we have macro one we'll head over to the only line of code there is and remember this is written in Visual Basic Visual Basic for applications which is what VBA stands for and so the only thing we need to do here is change the number format which is in these inverted commas to make the zero appear as a dash what we'll do is add a semicolon we'll put a dash in for the zero and we also want there to be a space afterwards so I'll do an underscore and the space needs to be the same width as a close bracket symbol to be the same width as these other ones now we change that macro we'll head back to Excel by clicking on this button view Microsoft Excel and if you watch this if I run the macro again with control shift N it replaces the zero with a dash. I can do that with all of these now. If I select all these numbers, Control Shift N, it replaces all of those with our desired number format, including a dash for a zero. So that was a quick introduction to how you could use macros in VBA. The Visual Basic for Applications language, VBA, is pretty powerful and it's quite a simple language to learn. The big problem with learning it is it's quite intimidating to begin with with this what's this visual basic editor so my friend asked me how am I gonna learn that well stick around and I'll show you more videos about how to learn macros and VBA for Excel alright I hope you enjoyed that and I hope you can see the potential and the power that's hidden behind Excel if only you can learn macros and VBA